Joe 245 here, and today we're taking a look at combat, so stay tuned. Alright, so this is my first, you know, Six Cents Black series review, and I was going to do, uh, what was that, but, uh, I decided to do this one first because I really like this figure. This is Cobb Vanth, you know, the Marshal of Moss Pelgo, or renamed uh, Freetown, I believe. But, uh, this is a really cool figure. It's one of my favorites. Now, I do have the box for this figure, but, um, unfortunately, it got put somewhere in storage, and I don't know exactly where it's at, so. But, um, luckily with the Boba bags, they have a, two, two of those ones in the box, so that, that's not an issue, but, um, well, further ado, though, let's get started with his accessories. Accessory so number one is this revolver, <coughs> and uh, which I think this is some kind of uh, flare pistol in real life. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but to me, this always kind of has like the profile and look of a Schofield, and um, I think that's kind of what they're going for. Is like a you know kind of gunslinger looking gun, but it's got like a scope on it and everything. It looks like a revolver cylinder right there. A uh, pretty cool pistol, and. Uh, he can hold it in his hand, which he holds it pretty good, actually. He also has a holster right here on the side of his leg where he can store this uh, uh, pistol when he's not using it. Okay, so moving on, we got this rifle, which uh, this rifle has a very AK-47 profile. And so you can tell, you can tell by like, the shape of this dust cover and the foregrip right here. But uh, it's got like a, they modified this part with the, where the magazine would, would, would go, and uh, see, it's got like a look like a collapsible stock and the uh, scope on top there. And um, it's got some wraps around the pistol, the pistol grip, and the uh, barrel, so it kind of you know, like it looks like it's you know, seen better days, but you know, still pretty cool. I actually really like this accessory, and uh, he can hold it. And unfortunately, he don't have anywhere to actually store this, but he can hold it, which I display him actually holding it like this. He, he it, you can get him in two handed pose, but it's a little bit. Hard, so I kind of display him holding it down like in a one handed pose. So, next up is a very important piece the jetpack. And um, as you can see, it's still in the colors of the you know, Return of the Jedi jetpack, but you know, they uh painted like the plate right here where he repaired the the damaged part of it from where it was hit in Return of the Jedi. And the missile is different. I do have the Return of the Jedi uh, deluxe Boba Fett, but the missile I'm not going to show you that because it's it's about to break and um. And I don't want to, you know, risk tearing it up, so that's why I didn't get it out. But as you see, you can remove the missile, and uh, it's, uh, as you can see, it's just, you know, with a peg right there. And you, it'd be cool if they made like a blast of thing where you could put it in here. But I don't know where Cobb Vance got this weird shaped missile for it. But I mean, it's, it don't look too bad. Though. It's kind of got the same color as this right here and everything, so it kind of flows a little bit. And you see, it's got some of the paint wore off too on here. And uh, you see, there's a peg, so if we go against the back, but, you know, you, you can put this on its back and see there's peg holes right here and where it lines up on the armor there so you can peg this on it helps kind of complete the, the look with the armor and stuff last but not least is the helmet and uh, as you can see it's very Return of the Jedi looking Boba Fett helmet and um, <clears throat> the rangefinder does move which is pretty cool you can kind of get an vintage Boba Fett figure pose if you wanted to but um, as you can see it's got a lot of paint wear and stuff on it you know, it's supposed to be after Boba Fett gets all that bit, so you know it kind of matched his paint job up pretty bad, even though it was already messed up. But you can see, pretty cool. And uh, the, uh, this is the same mold as the Return of the Jedi Ultimate Boba Fett helmet, except you know that one, the helmet was kind of sucked in a little bit and uh, didn't have the cool flare to it like this one does. And you can see, there's you know not much detail in there, and uh, which you you can go on his head. So if I need to zoom the camera out a little bit. There we go. You can uh, put it on his head, which that helps kind of complete the overall look for this figure. Which I usually display him with the helmet on because I display him with my Mandalorians. You know, Combat's definitely not a Mandalorian yet, anyways. But you know, since he's you know in the Boba Fett stuff, you know, he he fits in well with all the other Mandalorians. So let's take a look at uh, Combat's articulation. I took the helmet and the jetpack off so it wouldn't be in the way. You can see he's got like a ball jointed head right there in the neck. The scarf kind of gets in the way there a little bit, but he's got like a hinge. At his, at his shoulder here and his elbow and uh, some wrist articulation too as you can see so pretty good arm articulation got you know some ab crunch articulation which is kind of hindered by the, the armor piece as you can see he's got you know pretty good thigh articulation and a thigh cut right there as you can see which is a little bit stiff on mine but as you can see it is there it's just you know, I don't want to risk breaking his leg or something 
He's got some knee articulation, which is also a little bit stiff. And, you know, pretty good, you know, got a hinge and ankle pivot. Let's take a look at the sculpt design and color of Cobb Nash, starting with his head. And as you can see, a pretty good likeness to Timothy Oliphant, you know, the actor who betrayed Cobb Nash in The Mandalorian. And also the Book of Boba Fett. And, um, which I don't know if they're going to reuse this head on the, uh, two-pack that comes with Cad Bane. I ain't sure. But, uh, which if I get the two-pack, I'll review it too. And I have this one to compare, so. You can see, you're pretty good. It's got the lot. Because they had some white paint in his hair and his beard there, which kind of makes him look a little bit older like he does in the show. And, uh, you're just seeing a pretty, pretty good head sculpt. And, uh, the, there's also, you know, you can see his neck there too underneath the scarf here, which the scarf's kind of just a free floating piece around on his neck here. So it does kind of want to fall down some, but if you kind of tuck it under his chin there, that kind of helps hold it, uh, in place. Which I find to get right in there, that's the best, though it looks the best to me. But, uh, as you can see going around the back, see the neck continues there and the scarf. And there's not very much paint on the back of the armor here. But if, uh, for instance, if you got the jetpack on, you know, you're not going to see that. Which is, I'm always going to have the jetpack on him, so that it ain't much, ain't a big deal. But as you can see, going down, he's got, you know, some pretty good paint wear on the armor. There a lot more than Boba Fett. And because this is supposed to be after the Starlight Pit, so, uh, you know, it messed his paint job up, like I said. See, there's not very much detail on the undersuit right there. As much as being Koopa has some kind of some paint on that can make it look a little dirty because you know it's you know it's this you know suit seen better days. But going down, he's got like the orange or the kind of the pinkish red shirt underneath, and uh, which kind of sticks out right here. As you can see, it looks awkward. This whole armor looks awkward on Cobb Vance like it did in the show because if you put the helmet on him, his chin kind of stick out a little bit because you know this suit was made to fit Boba Fett, not Cobb Vance. So that's why you know Cobb Vance looks a little bit awkward you know in this. But in, as you can see the the arm uh, gauntlets have uh, some cool uh, paint wear on them as well. I showed us the shoulder plates, and there's the lithosaur skull, which is pretty cool. And um, he's got that uh, pistol belt. It looks like he's got a hook for a, a lightsaber, but I'm not sure what the hook there for. He didn't come with a lightsaber because he did use a lightsaber in the, in the show, so I'm not sure exactly what that's for. But as you can see, the holster, it been cool if they added some paint on the holster to make it look kind of worn. But as you can see, it's got some brown pants, which I wish they had some tan paint on here to kind of make the pants look dusty kind of like in the in the show but you know it's kind of just a flat brown and see he's got one knee pad on this side but no knee pad on this side but um, you can see it adds some silver paint wear to that too which why he didn't have the other knee pad I don't I don't know exactly but um you're going down to his boots you know it has brown boots and uh like I said if they would add some paint detail on these boots that made him stand out a little bit more but See, there's a little bit of white, like a white paint detail in his pants there, but you can see, you know, kind of plain, I think, because, you know, a lot of his other pieces had a lot of paint deco, so they kind of skipped out a little bit of paint deco on his bottom half here, but, so that's, you know, the details. So what do I think of this figure overall? I guess it's a pretty nice figure. I really like it now. It was kind of given the deluxe treatment, but I'm not 100% sure why, because, you know, I mean, he didn't come with a whole lot of accessories like a lot of deluxe figures, you know, like that. Deluxe uh, Return of the Jedi Boba Fett, you know, came with a lot of accessories. I mean, I can see why it was, you know, deluxe, but this one I'm not 100% sure. And, um, now if you want to, this is a cool pose you can do with this figure. You can kind of get him holding his helmet and stuff, kind of like that, which is a little bit hard to do. That hook on his belt kind of helps. But, um, now I probably won't display him this way. I, I usually display him with the helmet on because I think, you know, he looks better with the helmet. But, um, so if you like this uh, video and you want to see more like it, give me a thumbs up. That helped me out a lot. And don't forget to hit, uh, subscribe. Till next time.